I think it's actually the, the, the underlying cause of all of this and some of the funding is military funding because the military wants to be able to control the weather. The military has got an agenda that if they control the, the, the weather, they can control any country to make it do whatever they want. And many documents, uh, owning the weather 2025, um, there's several documents in which they talk about how it, rather than having some weapons of mass destruction, in other words, bombs or something, if they could control the weather in a country, they could actually force them and say, look, we will put you in drought, we will put you in floods. So some of the experiments with the weather modification and other things that the geoengineers are doing would mean that they would have, it would be a military application and a lot of money comes from the military se sector for this. I've looked at some of the universities and I looked at the funding chain, uh, in other words, who's, who's funding these, because it has to be public and we know that the military is also initiating programs and paying for funding. So when you look at the funding stream, you can see that it's private corporations, you can see that it's the military. So there's a lot of funding in there that's not coming from you and I because we couldn't afford it. And the big uh, military budget is where there's a lot of extra money for experimentation. So that's where a lot of the funding. And then it's, it's private corporations who will make money from these experiments going in and will produce whatever is needed to do these experiments. So that funding is coming in. It's like the, the CRESS program, the CRRES. When they were sending up these canisters in, in loaded with chemicals to superheat, well, that was a NASA budget, that's the U.S. Air Force budget, and then they do ionospheric testing. Well, how do we know what impact that had on the environment that protects us around the Earth? We don't really know. We just don't really know. The first thing that we started to notice about jets and, and these engines is they would leave a small contrail, very small. You, you would see it behind the plane, it would disappear within seconds and be gone. All of a sudden, this new phenomenon began to appear somewhere in the late 1980s, as far as I can document from Mendocino County, looking at pictures and weather documents and uh, cloud pictures, old cloud pictures. All of a sudden, there seemed to be a time when NASA and other agencies began to realize that contrails were beginning to persist. So NASA started studying um, jet contrails and they started to see that they were persisting for up to 20 hours. Um, they could cover 4,000 square kilometers. So they could cover huge areas, one contrail this is. So NASA studies began to show that they were exacerbating warming starting in the 19, around 1975. They began to show that there was a new phenomenon which they didn't have before, had not seen before, where these contrails persisting uh, rather than dissipating very quickly began to be something that they talked about, studied, etc. We don't know, in other words, why they began to persist. This is one of the curiosities here. And we just know that the studies, that they were studying them, but they didn't study what they were composed of why they would be forming and, in other words, expanding to such huge sizes. But my curiosity with NASA became that when they were talking about persistent jet contrails, they didn't talk about the fact that there were all these different varieties. In other words, one side of the jet having one type of contrail, the other jet engine on the other side leaving a different type of contrail. One would dissipate quickly, the other could leave a large plume. We had black contrails that we were, we were seeing here. We had uh, contrails that would turn into, it looked like toothpaste on a, on a tube. And when you saw these, we call them, I call them toothpaste trails. When we saw them, what we noticed is that they would dissipate relatively quickly. They'd break up into unusual configurations. So what I did is in order to have people understand that what they were looking at were different types of trails that had different dissipation rates or would turn into haze, and also that these contrails that we were seeing would turn into different types of man-made clouds. NASA just talks about jet contrails turning into man-made clouds in their studies, but they don't tell you about the brown clouds, they don't tell you about the different cloud configurations. 
that these contrails turn into. So one of the things I did from my pictures and from videotape and looking at different times is I compiled this index um, in 2006 of some of the different types of contrails that we were seeing and I named them. The reason I named them is people were telling me what they were seeing but they had no vocabulary. So in naming them, uh, people would tell me that they would see toothpaste trails or they would see knots on a rope where you'd have a straight line with little bulges in it that looked like someone had tied knots on a rope. You would have black contrails. So this, this particular document I, poster I created to put on the internet and to give to people so that they could see that this was different than anything that they had seen before. So when I started to document this, I took and I would find that there were things called bursts where a, a jet would fly in leaving a contrail and then all of a sudden you'd see this huge burst, no contrail leaving, but you would get this con kind of configuration and I go, well, what happened here? Why did this create a burst which then expands for miles and miles and miles over the sky above us? And why would this part of the trail turn into this type of configuration? So this was odd. So we had bursts. Then this configuration on the same day we'd see other jets flying in and it would leave bursts that look like this. And after a period of time they would turn into these kind of little cloud formations that would hang out in the sky around this bigger burst. Now other trails that would be left would be absolutely huge in configuration and they'd start small like up here. Every, every one of these contrails started very small. This is a fine line. But then after watching for a minute or two, we would figure out that it would turn into one of these other configurations. So some of them, we can tell right away, would turn into this type of a plume, which would turn into this white, uh, in other words, kind of a cloud-like formation, but not a real cloud. It's a man-made cloud, according to NASA, and it would cover the whole entire sky. So these configurations, um, if we saw anything that looked like this after a short period of time, we knew that this would cover the whole sky. Now, other configurations, knots on a rope, you'd have something that looked like waves. Um, you would have what we call mushroom uh, type of contrail, where part of the contrail turned into mushroom-like, it looked like mushrooms growing on one side of it, and the other side would not have that configuration. So the two sides of the jet engine would release a different type of plume, which would turn into, on either, either side of the jet, one plume could dissipate quickly, the other plume could turn into a different configuration. So we thought it odd. Then we'd have black contrails that would expand, and look expand like the white ones, but look like black. So we thought, well, what, what's, what's being released that would turn black? So all of these contrails I put into this poster so that people could see the feathers and the different ones. And as this was on the internet, people began to say, we're seeing this type of plume today. We're seeing a twist where it looked like there's a twist on one end and then this big plume would come up. So we, they could name the, the trails, how long they were seeing them. So when I talk to people from around the world and in the United States, we can discuss what type of trails that they're seeing and then they tell me about more and send pictures of different ones. Now this one, this colorful one right here, almost looks like an aurora and this type of contrail is usually laid out before we see this kind of configuration. Now without this, you can't see the color in the background unless you have the contrail here to show you what it looks like against the cloud. You can't watch the experiment or whatever's going on. We never saw anything like this when we were growing up. My mother, um, who first saw these when, when we were back uh, first seeing this in 2002, said, never saw anything like this. We would have noticed. Somebody would have been taking pictures of this. Someone, see, it has to be new because there were no pictures of this. So this is why I invented this particular poster, just so that people could get an idea of the different types. Well, then what happens? Why would you get different types?